in terms of a food chain, we can use the term producers to describe plants, mostly plants, because they can photosynthesize and produce their own food using photosynthesis. And from there onward, we have the consumers. The consumers can be divided into primary or secondary, tertiary or quaternary, depending on the trophic level. The trophic level, the trophic level refers to which part of the food chain the organism falls under. So if we are talking about trophic levels, the producers are considered trophic level number one. The primary consumers, number two. Secondary consumers, trophic level three. Tertiary consumers, trophic level four. Quaternary consumers, trophic level five. There's a general rule to this. As a rule of thumb, a food chain rarely exceeds five trophic levels. In fact, Five trophic levels is not always found in every single ecosystem. This is because of the limitations of energy transfer. Energy transfer in a food chain is limited in the sense that, although not stated here, whenever one organism consumes another organism, only approximately 10% of energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next. This is because when we consume another organism, not all of its energy will be taken into the consumer. For example, Looking at the human, for example, think of what you eat every day. Perhaps you eat rice, but you're only eating the rice grains. You are not eating the roots of the rice plant. You're not eating the husk. So there's a lot of material from the food you eat, which is simply not consumed, not eaten. We throw them away. If we are eating meat, we rarely eat bones, for example. And even if you do consume those things, even if you do eat the rice, most of the energy will be straight up used. In respiration, we generate energy from the food we eat and that energy is used to do work and we lose the energy in the form of heat mostly. Very little energy is retained within our bodies and very little is used to add on to our mass. Every day, we may eat more than, let's say, 1 kg, but it doesn't mean that we gain 1 kg of mass every single day. So a lot of mass can be lost, depending on how energy efficient we are. Because there is so much loss of energy and wastage of energy from one food chain to another, very little energy tends to be passed. Very little energy tends to be passed on to the final trophic level. And therefore, the final trophic level generally has to eat quite a lot, but it also must be sustained by a lot of the lower trophic level. To illustrate, there has to be a lot more plants to feed and sustain a population of primary consumers, which must in turn sustain a population of carnivores, which must be enough to sustain a population of their predators, and if there is another trophic level, that must also be enough to sustain the final trophic level. So if we talk about the populations of each trophic level's organism, they tend to look like a typical pyramid shape. 
And to summarize, this is because of the limited energy transfer of approximately 10% from one trophic level to the next.